Hey everyone, the wave of fall flagships has started crashing upon us, and the first of the lot is the Galaxy Note 9. Last year, the Note 8 was one of the best Android flagships you could find, and it was shockingly successful, or should we say, explosively successful, after the Note 7 disaster. However, the Note 9 doesn't seem to be that much of an upgrade from the Note 8, so should you really spend your money on it, or should you go get something else? I'm Angie for GSM Arena, and this is our Galaxy Note 9 review. The Galaxy Note 9 is not Samsung's most original looking device to date. It's still beautiful, but like the S9 series before it, the device looks almost identical to the previous generation. The bezels are slightly slimmer on the newer device, but if you leave a Note 8 and a Note 9 facing up next to each other, it's extremely hard to tell which is which. Turn them over and things once again are only slightly different. There's a heart rate sensor to the right of the cameras and the fingerprint reader has been moved up below the horizontal cameras to give the whole setup the look of a crooked face. This fingerprint sensor is easier to find without looking, but it's still too high up for convenient use if you've got smaller hands. It's also a little slower than what you'd find in a Huawei or OnePlus device. The mix of face and iris scanning also works well, but you need the phone to be a little closer to your face in order for it to work. After setting up your unlock method, you can change the display options for notifications on the lock screen. Over time, you can also customize the notification settings for each app, from disabling them entirely to deciding what sounds and lights you prefer. At this size, this is a device for two-handed use. It's large, slippery, and still a little top-heavy. The shiny glass that makes it look so luxurious, combined with the large surface area, means that it's much more likely to break if you drop it, so you should really get a case. That said, it still has that IP68 rated protection, though if you do end up dropping it in chlorinated or salt water, you should wash it off so the seals last longer. However, if you do crack your screen and you need to get it replaced, try to do it at a Samsung service center because you risk not having the seals properly replaced if you do it anywhere else. Some places just glue it on and you end up losing that very, very useful IP68 protection. Also, repairing the screen might cost around a third of the cost of the phone, so just, just don't drop it. On the bottom of the device, there's still a headphone jack and a USB-C port. What we find here as well is the S Pen. We get a subtle black pen for the black model, but if you have the blue color, it comes in a vibrant yellow. What makes this phone a little more unique than any other phone, or even any other previous Note, is a Bluetooth-capable S Pen. You can unlock the phone, activate the camera app, and then take a picture, all from across the room. You can also browse through photos or change slides if you're using the PowerPoint app, but for most people, those are rarer use cases. As before, you can draw notes on the screen and they automatically get saved to the Samsung Notes app. For now, I haven't found a way to save them to an alternate Note app like Google Keep, but they're easy to export. Like on the Note 8, the pen uses technology licensed from Wacom. It has 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity and pretty good accuracy. There's a tiny amount of lag, but considering the fact that this is a phone screen you're writing on, it would be difficult to use in a professional setting anyway. Still, it's fun to sketch on. The Super AMOLED screen is a massive 6.4 inches and has an excellent QHD resolution with 516 ppi. I've also noticed that you get to experience the definition of a first world problem with QHD screens. Since the resolution is much higher, many of the wallpapers available on popular apps look fuzzy, so you waste a lot more time searching for higher resolution photos because your phone deserves better. Colors are extremely accurate in all of the color modes except in the default adaptive display mode where they're a little bit more vivid but still don't get too off kilter. The Note 9 screen gets plenty bright with a peak brightness of 658 nits as measured in a standardized test. You should have no issues with legibility outdoors. The divisive curved edges on the side of the screen are still there, but considering how large the phone is, it's very easy to ignore them. The speaker's quality is excellent this year, and they are substantially louder than the one on last year's Note 8, and received a very good rating on our loudness tests. This is the first Note with stereo speakers. You'll find one on the bottom, and one that doubles as the earpiece. When you hold the phone in portrait mode, the bottom driver covers bass and the earpiece covers treble. But in landscape mode, they switch to left and right channels respectively. Personally, I think the landscape version sounds better, so I full screen any video I watch. With headphones, there's virtually no distortion and it's the best result we've seen so far this year. For even more vibrant sound and a wider soundstage, you can turn on the Dolby Atmos setting. It's been updated and now offers the choice of optimizations for movie, music, and voices. 
there's also an auto mode that chooses for you. Personally, I think most things sound best with the music option ticked. There's also an adapt sound option which will analyze your hearing and turn up the frequencies that you can't hear well, so you don't need to pump up the music as high to enjoy it. The Note 9 received a very good 97 hour endurance rating in our battery life tests. This wasn't surprising thanks to its 4000 mAh battery. This is one of the biggest batteries Samsung has had in its phone to date, and it's 500 mAh larger than the infamous Galaxy Note 7. However, since that fiasco, Samsung has created a series of safety checks to make sure that none of their phones explode again. You get 37% of the battery charged in half an hour, which frankly is slow in comparison to other 2018 flagships. However, for a full charge, it takes an hour and 45 minutes, which is closer to what you'll see from other phones. It can also quick charge wirelessly, but once again, it depends on which Qi charger you own. The Galaxy Note 9 comes with either the Snapdragon 845 or the Exynos 9810, which are the same chipsets available on the S9 Duo. The Exynos is faster than the Snapdragon, but unfortunately it's not usually available for buyers from the US. Still, both chipsets can handle heavy multitasking and heavy apps without a slowdown. The Note 9 supports Android Oreo 8.1. Hopefully it'll soon be updated to Android Pie, but it's a bit surprising that Samsung didn't wait for this ninth iteration of Android so they could launch it together with the phone. Since it is Android 8.1, what you find isn't too different from the S9 devices. There's a game launcher that's convenient for organizing games that would otherwise clutter your app drawer. The gallery has some basic editing software and offers some presets. On the left side of the phone, you can still find the Bixby button. Bixby seems to have been upgraded, or at least it now has new animations and some new options. Unfortunately, there's no way to deactivate the button, and if you click it, it will end up interrupting whatever you're doing. The Note 9 has two 12 megapixel cameras on the back. One is a telephoto that allows for optically stabilized 2 times optical zoom, and the other is a main snapper with a variable aperture. In daylight, images are rich with detail, noise free, and have much more natural colors than on previous Galaxy phones. Auto HDR allows for a wider dynamic range, though the scene optimizer occasionally makes it more contrasty. Speaking of which, Samsung's scene optimizer is one of the better ones we've seen. It's easy to switch off, but occasionally it gives photos a nice amount of pop, like on these flowers. The telephoto camera is quite good, with good colors and plenty of detail, though it has slightly less contrast than the main snapper. Live focus, aka portrait mode, works well for the most part, although on occasion it can get confused with loose hair. It works better in bright light because the telephoto doesn't work too well in dim conditions. In low light, photos look good, there's no desaturation and dynamic range is improved. The Note 9 is also better than the S9 when exposing sources of light. The trade-off is that there's more noise and edges aren't as well defined. The front camera is an 8 megapixel one with an f1.7 aperture. Sound familiar? Well, it's remained unchanged since the Galaxy S8. Still, photos are good and offer plenty of detail and nice colors. Portrait mode works well too. The front facing camera has no front facing flash, but the light of the screen can often be enough to illuminate your face in low light conditions. Like the S9, the Note 9 supports 4K and 1080p video recording at 60 frames per second. 4K videos are detailed and free of noise. The colors are great and so is the contrast and white balance. There are no focus issues or compression artifacts and once again, we were impressed by the dynamic range. 4K on the telephoto camera is a little bit less sharp and its colors are less saturated. The phone has both EIS and OIS, so footage is nicely stabilized though it can look artificial when you do panning shots. 1080p videos also exhibit practically the same qualities. They are quite sharp with plenty of detail, but other than that, they have the same essentials. Great dynamic range, accurate colors and white balance, and high contrast. Slow motion on the Note 9 has been refined even further, and you can now capture footage at 960 frames per second for twice as long as before. There's both manual and automatic capture options, with the latter being quite accurate. Sadly, for now, it's still in 720p. The Note 9 is a beast of a phone. It has so many features and options that it would literally take hours to get through them all. However, it's missing two things that might be deal breakers for some of you. It doesn't have an IR blaster and it doesn't have an FM radio. You can't have it all, can you? Also, there's a little bit too much overlap between this and the Galaxy Note 8. So if you already have that phone, there's really no point in upgrading unless you're desperate for extra battery life. However, if money is not an issue, or you have an older phone, this is easily the best Android phone out there right now. So I can easily recommend it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button down below and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get our latest tech reviews as soon as they're out. See you next time.